Well, woke me this up. This is a little bit different. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, Fred and I here are downtown in Big Palm Harbor. Beautiful downtown. Yeah. Historic so, Palm Harbor. We're gonna try something a little different. Uh, yes, we're gonna we do some night portraits, and we're waiting for sunset right now. And one of the things we're gonna do, we got these from our buddies at Rogue. I'm using a honeycomb grid, and you can get these. I'll put the link to these down here so they can buy them. That's $39.95. Comes with a honeycomb grid and uh, some filters, as well as the attachment to put on your flash. We're probably going to use a couple flashes. This also comes with some, I think, a blue, green, or red, red filter, um, and you can get additional filters. What a honeycomb grid does is it takes the light and it makes it very directional. It uh, makes it more harsh, but it's directional. It doesn't have any nice soft fall off. So um, this is what we're going to want for this particular shot that we're going to attempt. The idea is to use the ambient lights around here, which is going to require a long exposure. Explosure. 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 Okay, I like that. <laughs> a long exposure. And then the portrait will be exposed by using the flash. In other words, it's almost kind of a pseudo HDR or like almost like a kind of a flash light painting I don't know exactly what you would call it okay but the flash is going to provide the exposure for their subject and then a longer exposure you know I don't know 10 15 seconds we're gonna to have to find a base exposure for that for the um, the ambient the background, the background yes. yes which we want a little bit maybe a stop underexposed anyway to give it that little separation then in addition I've got a second flash and we're going to use I'm going to use a flash trigger on the camera to fire these and I'm putting these in an A and a B so they're separate so I can control the balance between them using the little flash trigger right and on the other flash I may put a blue gel on it or any color gel really but I was thinking of blue for some reason that the movies have got us uh, thinking that when you see a lot of blue light, that that's night. It's kind of like moonlight. It's not really, but they use the blue gel. That's, that's the impression it gives us, anyway. So that's what we're going to do. Maybe put a little blue light as a backlight on it or a rim light. Anyway, we're going to experiment around with this and see what we got. So uh, well, what are we talking about? Let's yeah, go I don't do know. It. Well, it's, yeah, well, right now we're waiting for the light to kind of come down the lights to come on here we got the street lights coming up there's the lights the barber shop across the street everything else looks kind of quiet <laughs> i think maybe everything's closed on monday mm, anyway so let's so. go ahead and see what we can get well okay. it's yes sir well, it's 24 hours later now, and we didn't get what we wanted last night in Palm Harbor because we found out that... Um, everything was closed everything, on Monday. Yeah, it was Monday night, a lot of the restaurants were closed. There was not much activity. All the lights were turned off, and we just really didn't get what we wanted. So we come to the next town over. And well, the way you said a, it is if it's such a long way. We just decided to, yeah, well, it's to hit Dunedin. Well, it's just a few miles. Yeah, yeah not Dunedin. too far away. So it has a lot more to offer here. I mean, behind right. it's an old railroad station. There's a railroad cars in here. Lots of lights. A lot more going on here. I guess they just roll up the sidewalks in Palm Harbor. Well, Palm Harbor's <laughs> just more mellow. Yes. Dunedin has got stuff going all every day, seven days a week. So we're going to try again. And one of the things we're going to do now, again, just to repeat, is we're going to take a number of exposures to determine what the background is once we get that set camera set on manual by the way then we'll kind of tune it in with the subject using the uh, flash in order to bring in so we're probably going to use a long exposure many seconds for background the background lights and of course the instant flash for the uh, lights for the subject <laughs> for a for the model with with the uh, the snoot and honeycomb yeah on it, we're going to use a honeycomb grid to narrow that down and the honeycomb grids we'll explain this a little bit later um, allows you to control how much of that is kind of focused off but that gives a nice hard cut off and what's not bleeding over into bushes and things in the background so Fred, why don't we go ahead and see if we can find a spot and set up and see what happens stop yapping and take some pictures there you go all right
Okay, well. Yeah. Well, that we was had pretty a, interesting. Had a, lot yeah. a lot of fun doing it. The problem with doing these and things is knowing when to stop. Had very well, there's a lot of people with some interesting uh, uh, observations and yeah, kind yeah, of checking yeah. us out. But they tried to was photo bomb nice. our uh, couple of them did, yeah, but that's all right. It worked out very nicely. Well, anyway, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So the main thing is to set your ambient first, and that, I think the longest right. we went like five or six seconds in this particular right. scenario. And then start staging your and lights and setting set your, your lights up. Amount yeah, of, move uh, them around, and we're going to show the images of uh, some of the stuff that we didn't like, and moving it toward. To, towards did. things that we did like. This yeah. one of the advantages of digital, the fact that you can do this, and you mentioned the days of film. You know, had 36 yeah, exposures like in there, and you wait four or five days later to see if you got anything, and then you had to come back and... Uh, or if you had your own uh, studio and your own development, you know. But even then, you'd room. have to take it out someplace, yeah. process it, print it up, check it out. Yeah, so. for that can't be digital. <laughs> no. So, you have questions, and uh, we're hoping to do this at the next uh, Black Hills photo shootout. We've got some plans. So, uh, we'd like to see some of your pictures and the things that you've done uh, if you use this technique or try it out. Or, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see them try it out. I would actually what, what are like we to calling this? Them. I'm calling it night portraits. So. Yeah, and you wouldn't necessarily have to do it in a city, although I think a city offers a lot of possibilities. I like possibilities. nightlight painting. Well, it's not really light painting, so... No, not really. It's, it's, it's newer. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to get that joke right No, not unless you less go back and listen to the previous podcast, and you'll get that one. Yes. Or go back on YouTube and watch the previous... Okay. All right. but anyway. anyway, that's all I got. We wanted to yeah. leave your comments. It's getting late. We're rambling. It's time for us to go in whatever. before the uh, home comes to get us. And yeah, we got to hit the bar before we go home. So, all right. Well, that's all I got. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so, we wanted to talk a little bit more about the specifics on the equipment that we used and how we achieved or yeah. we were working to achieve our final results. We wanted to show results. off and make, give a little deeper explanation. Sure. We talked about the honeycomb grids. This is... A honeycomb grid, as you can see there, you can see what it does to the the, the background. And with the rug set up, you get uh, several that you can put into. And this thin one here would actually spread the light, spread out the light a little more. This one would concentrate it a bit more. And you could combine the two of them together. They just press in this gadget right in here. I'll put the, I'll put them all in there, see, like that. Mm -hmm. And then that goes into this holder that will then... You wrap it around your flash. Strap it, strap it in with these, and then you put this onto your flash, and it should work with any strobe. So that's the honeycomb filters. You wouldn't necessarily have to use it, but you don't want that flash or that light going all over the place or making a pool, so that's the reason why we use that. It also comes with a, a three filters that come with it. I think there's like a little daylight conversion, a blue right. and a green. And you can buy additional filters. They have a whole package of... Uh, well, speaking of that... In fact, I think it shows on the front of the package there. Right. We could turn around and show that real quick. Several see, more. there's a number, and then also Rogue has um, these. You can get a whole packet, whole and I can't remember, and but I'll put the link. this is the one that we link. actually used as our background. Yeah, and line. it was probably a little too blue. Probably could have used one a little bit lighter, but they have a little rubber band. They can again go over any flash, and allow you to be a little more creative and kind of match the lights up. So we wanted to talk about that and then we thought we'd go over some of the pictures that we had real quick okay just to give you a better idea of how we do this now the first thing i said what we do and i'm going to show some pictures here I've got a slideshow going how we would first go through with the uh, the still camera mm -hmm. to determine what looks like a good background and generally you want your background one maybe up to two stops underexposed um that helped set off your subject a little bit. So here was a couple shots we did of these statues. Here was one that was a little, uh, I, this first one here, I thought maybe a little too bright and uh, I wanted it 
to be a little dimmer in there. And uh, then we set up our strobes. Here's uh, their slave there with the, uh, the blue gel on it. And eventually get around to doing Fred. Now, this particular shot, we want to, we demonstrated this because we want to say that it's important. Some Don't of these move. shots were four or five seconds. The subject can't move unless you want a ghost effect, which is actually kind of cool. <laughs> so, so if you want to... We got a ghost racing. Get into the spirit of the this is the, the, the shoot. The, the coast ahead. train. That's right. This is a good Halloween shoot. Just to show you some of the things you can do. Another thing you can do that if you have a long exposure, people milling around the background. Those people are going to be blurred, and your subject's going to be nice and still. So that could be an interesting effect too. Right. But here's the final result. This isn't a great image, but <laughs> no, we we're. were try to work Look, out with what we, we were had trying to there. do is work yeah. with what we had and have and we were having fun and people yeah. were looking at us of course like we were two crazy guys but yep. that was all right should say what this is a railroad station these are the statues it's now a, it's actually a, a museum, museum now. right it was originally a, a train station through yep. Dunedin Florida mm -hmm. and it is now a museum so uh, they have the bronze statues out yep. in front to commemorate and some here's, of the goings-on and then of course here's one with a conductor that we museum behind us set so. up and, and in the same situation, we were able to use basically the same exposure for right. the background. I think these were probably around four seconds, something like that, for it. Here's when we did uh, the uh, city itself. And when we were setting up, that is just a dark hole there. There was nothing, no light right. coming on there at all. And we decided that the light, primary light, should come like more from the city side. So we put it off to Fred's right, which would be the left of the picture. And a little blue there to give us that moonlight mm -hmm. blue effect on sure. the side. And again, we could just throw somebody else in there. <laughs> right. right. Once you have everything framed up, you can just throw yeah, another model in there. Yeah, you frame it and have the light set up. You could uh, put next. And, and of this course, one then here. We, we had a different area that yeah. was lit a little bit more brightly. And but so Jim wanted to get a little bit more of the secondary light in right. there, but it was a little blue. And what we did, yeah, we didn't like this one because there was just too much. I, I blue. was a bluebeard. So what we did in this case is rather than I could have used the because uh, I was using a remote trigger to trigger that I could have knocked it down a little bit, but instead I just moved it back and angled it a little bit more. And, and we got more. Of I thought we got a pretty look. acceptable yeah. shot. Now again, we got the lights coming off of Fred's left side or the right side of the picture because that's where the main lights in the scene were. So you want to think about that, of where, what, what is your lighting source? You're mm -hmm. trying to kind of match that right. so it looks natural. I think that looks pretty natural. That doesn't look very natural. <laughs> but once again, once you get the lighting set up. So you could have a stand-in for that matter, and then you you bring your star in and have him sit. Or she. Or she. That's right. I don't want to be sexist. Now, the lighting on this had changed again, so... Yep. What? So we had to do, again, to set our background, and this was the final background the way I liked it. And as you can see, the cart itself is totally dark. I mean, it's in between the actual practical lights that are there. But we pop that in and again make it and look. there's a special setting on the camera that makes the your uh, model appear yeah just, just like that it's amazing yeah, it's boing. and then ding they're there then it just magically appears and then there that same setting uh to take it to the next one yep oh look at that look at that just set another person in there maybe refrain a little bit and we got the dunedin sign in there and the railroad cart so and this one, we were just kind of, I think it was the end of the night, we were getting kind of slap happy, and uh, so uh, the poor conductor was hard of hearing. <laughs> well, here, it was like talking to a stone, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So like, kind of like talking to a bronze statue. But here's one, and we'll, we'll go through this again. I thought that the blue was a little too intense for this. I and mean, this is one of the advantages of digital, the fact that you can look at it right away and get it. And I thought the door frame was just a little too bright. So we knocked the blue down and then um, cut out the door frame. But I still felt that this one was, it's, it's not bad. But, but I didn't thought like the way it, it was my shoulder. I thought it was a little bit yeah. too much light on the shoulder. So... This ended up being the final one, and I think all I did when there was just angle the light off of you a little bit, so it just kind of kissed the side on. So, 
hopefully that is uh, explains it and gives you an idea how to go do yeah. this. Go set your background first, and uh, that was probably going to be several seconds. Now, I was using an ISO 100. I really knocked it down, and because um, I, I wanted the longer exposure to prove that we can do that. Right. So the background is lit by the ambient light. The subject is lit by the flash, which is you know sudden. Mm -hmm. It's important that the subject itself don't move for that four or five seconds or right. whatever it is. But hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the things you can do. And as I said, if you have people milling around, you actually could have the people kind of blurred with the subject frozen. So I think so. you could get that kind of, kind of standing cool. still in a, in a busy city yeah, type Yeah, I think it would be kind of a cool shot. The so same with traffic. You could have the traffic going by right. with streaks of taillights and stuff, headlights. A lot of crazy things you can do. So show us what you can do. Love right, and, and you might want to get better models than we were. So. <laughs> Absolutely. But that's all right. Yeah. It no gives one, you some good food for thought. and, and No one would want to We had a blast doing it. So, And you know what was interesting? We'll have people, to do it again, and I'm yeah, going to do... The people that were wandering downtown that night were really nice about oh, yeah. it. A couple yeah. came. Uh, we had uh, one or two people give us unsolicited advice. <laughs> right. And then we had <laughs> some people saying, what are you doing? And another guy said, you're not the FBI, are you? <laughs> uh, and we said, no. He nope, says, oh, CIA. okay. <laughs> and so... Uh, well, it was it was fun stuff though, and that's what. Listen, anytime you try a new style of photography, have some fun with it. Relax. Right. Oh, don't, yeah. don't be all tensed up. Well, it's supposed to be experiment, fun. and then once you get something down, so where you can repeat it and get the same results over and over again. Now, if you want to get serious about it and have some really great looking models uh, in the pictures or well, family good. friends or whatever you're trying to get, if you really want it. to have some fun, you want to save the date for the next Black Hills photo shootout because I'm planning on doing a night portraits with cowboy models in South Dakota so here we go Tempton. all right start signing up now all right